We in America are immigrants, or the children of immigrants. We are one people, but a people welded from many nations and races. People who came to America during a vast migration from Europe to other parts of the world. In this migration, millions of Europeans left their homelands to settle in new countries across the seas. Almost two-thirds of them came to the United States. When we became a nation, our population numbered just under four million. Each symbol here represents half a million people. Most of our people were of British origin. But there were also Dutch and many Germans, as well as French, Spanish, a great many Negroes, and others. The era of the Great Migration from Europe began about 1820. During the following 70 years, immigrants came from Western and Northern Europe in growing numbers. The earliest waves brought people from Ireland and Great Britain, from Germany and nearby countries. Later, the Scandinavians joined the migration from the north and west of Europe. Then, in the 80s, from the south and east they came as the migration fever spread deeper into Europe. During this period, too, came immigrants from the Orient. The century following 1820 saw Asiatic migration as Chinese and Japanese crossed the Pacific in considerable numbers. These people from the Orient settled chiefly in our far west. The flow of immigration reached its peak between 1891 and 1920. During these years, a tremendous movement set in from the countries of Southern and Eastern Europe. Many still came from the North and West, but many more came from Austria-Hungary, Poland, Russia, Italy, and the Balkan Peninsula. But what of the people behind these symbols? What were their motives and hopes? Let us turn back to a steamship agent's office in a European port a half century ago. Most of those seeking passage to America are farmers and peasants, like this family from Eastern Europe. Behind them lie years of labor on land that could never be theirs. A man grows discontented when his own labors and the labors of his family go mainly to enrich a landlord. For peasants like these, there is hope of a better life in America across the sea. And there are those who have known at first hand the political oppression of autocratic governments. Governments that deal swiftly and ruthlessly with those who dare to champion political liberty and freedom of expression. To the man deprived of civil rights in his native land, America offers the hope of freedom. And then there are families like this, who have suffered a religious persecution that could drive them from their homes and scorn their right to worship in their own manner. For such as these, there is the promise of religious freedom in immigration to America. These and millions of others like them make up the great migration. Millions of every nation and calling drawn together by their vision of America, a vision of land, opportunity, and freedom. These gladly face the long ocean voyage. Then, immigration gateways like Ellis Island and examination by immigration officials. Here, at the turn of the century, almost all Europeans enter freely, except undesirables such as criminals. For all new arrivals, there is a medical examination 
to weed out those with serious illnesses and dangerous diseases. Many are rejected. Once in the new land, what lies ahead? These groups of Europeans that came before 1890 spread rapidly westward to settle both on the farms and in the cities. By the year 1900, settlements of Germans were scattered widely from east to west. Scandinavians were grouped in the northern Middle West, and the Irish were largely concentrated in the Northeast. Today, the sons of these immigrants still cultivate the soil that their fathers made their own. And the farming communities and cities founded by these groups are typically American. Here, there is little trace of the old world though we find these communities still peopled by the children of these immigrants. Most of the immigrants that came after 1890 went into the factories and found their homes in the tenements of America's growing cities. The crowded slums became America's melting pot. Sprawling communities of transplanted peoples living side by side but still diverse in languages and customs, as diverse as these shop signs that mark the immigrant neighborhoods. These communities posed an urgent question to America. Could these people of many nations become a part of the American way of life? In meeting this problem, many agencies played a part. The churches, that preserved traditional ties in the midst of new surroundings. The newspapers that spoke to the immigrants in languages they knew. The trade unions that taught them to work together. These and other agencies drew into the larger community the stream of new arrivals. In 1924, a law was passed to restrict immigration from countries outside the Western Hemisphere. By this law, the number to be admitted henceforth was to be in proportion to the national origins of our country's population. This gave to Northern and Western Europe more than 80% of the total, while Southern and Eastern Europe received less than 20%. After 1924, immigration from Europe dwindled and virtually stopped during the depression of the 1930s. But immigration from our American neighbors went on. A century of immigration has brought in many people from Canada, and more recently, there has been a lively migration from Mexico as well as from the Caribbean area. Today, these people of every nation and race have become Americans all, a people still diverse, but sharing common aspirations and drawn together in their common contribution of the skills and talents that have made America a great nation. The school has been a most important influence in the making of Americans. Here, the meaning of our country, its institutions and its culture, reaches the children of every community and race and origin. Here too, the latest arrivals from abroad, young and old alike, have an opportunity to study the language and history of America. these people are preparing for an important step, admission to citizenship. Here, they come to testify to their fitness to become once and for all a part of the United States of America. To these new citizens belongs the promise of long ago, send these the homeless 
tempest-tossed to me, I lift my lamp beside the golden door. 